ocean of storms. Everything about the moon landing during the night was man in space. Frank? Well, man has done it again. The Apollo 12 astronauts, Pete Conrad and Alan B. Man in space. Frank? Well, man has done it again. The Apollo 12 astronauts, Pete Conrad and Alan Bean, are taking a well-deserved rest right now aboard their lunar module, Intrepid, which is parked neatly on the moon's ocean of storms. Everything about the moon landing during the night was spectacularly successful, except that the color television camera, which allowed us to watch the astronauts, stopped working after a very short time. ABC science editor Jules Bergman has the full report, beginning with the sounds of the actual moon landing. He's got it made. Come on in there. 24 feet. Contact light. Roger. Copy contact. Close landing. P. Outstanding. Man. After our on. Beautiful. He's got that. It was an astonishing pinpoint landing with Pete Conrad, Al Bean, and their onboard computer guiding Intrepid down to less than 600 feet from the Surveyor 3 spacecraft that was their major target. Hours later, Conrad emerged first to begin his four-hour-long moonwalk, and the color TV camera worked perfectly. It pictured Conrad stepping onto the moon, and true to form, Conrad kitted himself and Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the moon. The first TV pictures were excellent, but as Al Bean placed the camera on a tripod, he inadvertently let too much sunlight hit the lens and the sensitive television tube burned out, leaving both mission control and millions of anxious people without a view of the astronauts as they began their real work. The two astronauts then deployed the lunar surface experiment package more than 500 feet from the LEM to send back scientific data on moonquakes, the lunar magnetic, atmospheric, and ion fields. Later tonight, they emerge again in their moonwalk to examine Surveyor 3, which has been on the moon more than two and a half years. Last week at Cape Kennedy, I filmed this preview of what the astronauts hope to do with Surveyor early tomorrow. Using this full-scale mock-up of the 650-pound Surveyor spacecraft, Conrad and Bean have intensively rehearsed everything they have to do. They'll begin, after hiking over from Intrepid, by taking pictures of the original footprint left by Surveyor when it first bounced on the moon. And then the second footprint it left when its motor failed to turn off and it jiggled over a few feet away. They'll then take pictures of these trenches made in the moon's soil by the tiny scooper on Surveyor, which was the first man-made device ever to sample the lunar soil. After doing that, they'll move around to this side of the Surveyor spacecraft. And using bolt cutters carried aboard, Conrad will snip off this strut to give scientists back on Earth an idea of the erosion effects of the lunar environment on metal. Wiping their spacesuit gloves across this reflective thermal covering, that'll give scientists an idea of how much lunar dust has accumulated and what micrometeorite hits, if any, have taken place. They'll then move up to the solar panels that powered Surveyor and break off a piece of the glass solar cells like this. So again, the effects of meteorite dust and lunar dust on the surface can be examined. They'll put that in a package to bring back with them. Then the final act they'll do, they'll move around to the 18-pound TV camera carried aboard. Conrad will snip the electrical cables and then snip off these five struts that hold the camera. They'll then put the camera in a knapsack carried on Conrad's back and begin their hike back to the Intrepid spacecraft. This is Jules Bergman, ABC News at the Kennedy Space Center. ABC's live coverage of the mission of Apollo 12 resumes tonight at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time and will continue until 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time. The ABC Evening News with Frank Reynolds and... Walter Schirra in New York. Good evening. Apollo 12 astronauts Conrad and Dean lifted off from the moon today and rejoined Dick Gordon in the command module. They then sent the moon ship Intrepid, which had carried them safely to the moon and back, smashing into the lunar surface. Its impact, about 24 miles from their home base on the ocean of storms, registered on Space Center seismographs, giving a reading against which future meteor impact on the moon can be measured. Earlier, mankind was given its first look at a live docking in space. Before we see those pictures, here is a simulation of Conrad and Bean's second moonwalk. You hear the enthusiasm in their voices as they collect rocks and then walk over to the 1967 Surveyor and detach its television camera. 
Alright, Al, where do you want to grab the sample here? Right here, I'd like to grab that rock right there because it's got kind of a sharp edge on it and all the rest of them are, uh, it's got kind of an, uh, a bleak edge on it and they don't see many like that around here. Me. This one right here, this gray one. This one, the big one? The big one. Ho, 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 wait till I get the pictures. Okay. Al, look at the bottom of that crater. Hey, look at that. Do you think that stuff melted or what? What does that look like to you? Well, it looks to me, those rocks look, what it looks to me like is we've got one of those central, little bitty central peaks, you know, a little rebound there like the, the, the don't they look melted on the top? Don't they look like they've been, they were bold, they're not, they're not completely jagged. You ought to grab one of these pieces of rock. Hey, 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 here's some good rock samples right here. Come on. Okay, let's get with them right here. I know. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's a good rock. Hey, look at the pits in it, too. That's always the good rock. A lot of time. This is going to be a good rock. Houston is about three feet in diameter, about two feet thick. Got a background. Well rounded. Got, uh, a lot of surface pits in it. I can see uh, the glitter. I got to back off to 15 feet. This one. Okay. You know what I feel like now? Uh, you only know, see those pictures that you're ass running in slow motion. That's <laughs> exactly what I feel like. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful sight. You know, this was brown, and I don't remember ours being brown there at the Cape. Kind of a light tan, or maybe that's, maybe that's the way it's changed color. What color was this one? Houston white? When it what started out? That's all white. The equipment bays and the primary structure was all painted with a white paint. Good <laughs> tan or something. We'll have to look at it more closely. No, that's what happened. It changed color, huh? It sure has. It's not to cook that paint brown. It has sort of weathered a little bit, three and a half, 31 months, in it? Do you, though? Do you what? I've got antenna still pointed right there. That's not normal. Do I have to move? Okay, that's all. That's done. Okay, we got the, uh, got the, uh, the, uh, sample, Houston. And here are the historic first pictures of today's docking. Walter Cronkite and former astronaut Wally Sharab are the commentators. This is from the command module. Of the, uh, lunar module ascent stage, Intrepid. Okay, it looks so good when you're so ugly. Say again? Okay, look so good when you're so ugly. <laughs> there they go. You look awful good yourself. There they go. Yeah, that's... You got to pitch around and get their... Two rolls, Dad. Nose in for the command module. Yeah, from the right side of the command module and so the on the left so he's off the left so you'll see this move as if we're going to the right whereas the center line is really to the left of the screen gee that's great to see that you see the window come into focus on the left hand mm -hmm. docking operation and the relaxed atmosphere in which it took place says so much more than mere words about how far we've come in the conquest of space. Here's something that only a few short years ago would have seemed almost inconceivably complicated and risky. 
And yet today, Conrad, Bean, and Gordon found it so routine that they chatted and joked while it was being televised for all of us to see, a quarter of a million miles away. We'll be reporting the highlights of the rest of this trip home, ending with splashdown on Monday. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News Space Center.